Yeah, I like that. Hallelujah. Can y'all hear me? How y'all doing? Praise God. You happy to be in the house of God? You happy to be at Arizona Center Deliverance Center? Arizona Deliverance Center? <laughs> I almost put my job uh, name in there, Virginia D. Piper Cancer Center. Anyway, this is not a cancer center. Thank God we're delivered from spirits of cancer. Hallelujah. Jesus. In Jesus' name. So welcome. Welcome. Any first time visitors? Any first time visitors? Hi. My sister Mariah way back there. And this is my brother. Where are you from, brother? Oh, nice. California, brother. Right on. Praise God. Welcome him. Welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, good to see you guys. Anyone have any testimonies that they want to give? Brother Mike, he really, really encourages you guys to give testimonies if you have one. Any healings? Anything that you want to share? Anything? Nothing? Who? Steve? Who, who got one? Anybody? You got one, Kelly? All right. Well, yeah. Steve, you got a you got a testimony you want to share? Yes, sir. You got it. You got to show. Uh, you got to tell the streamers about it and let them see your face and welcome streamers. Sorry, I, I always forget to welcome the streamers on YouTube, but welcome tonight. This is Brother Steve getting his testimony. Amen. Amen. Um. I have been coming here for four months, so I've been having a lot. So many things have been cast out of me that I can't just list them all. It's too many. But um, every area of my life has improved, and um, there's been some forwards, some backwards, and I'm being told by Mike that that's normal. And um, I'm just, my mind now is becoming clear. My heart is becoming clear so I can serve God again and attain to him and hear him and read his word and pray. And so I'm getting a lot of vision from the Lord again, and I'm coming alive. My heart is coming alive. Yeah. So tonight I came early at 5.30, and I met with Robert, and we talked about soul wounds because soul wounds is how the, the spirits come in. These lights are bright. Yes, they are. I wonder if Mike's always looking like that. <laughs> Um, soul wounds is a little open door for the enemy to come in and attach to, to um, that and stay in you. And so I'm dealing with soul wounds. And tonight, um, the spirit of my parents, spirit, parent spirit came out of me, like hurled out of me heavily. So, um, amen. So they came into me in layers, and they're coming out. I get frustrated, and I cry to Mike on Facebook, and then he, he tries to calm me down. I get angry sometimes, and um, but every area of my life is, is better, and I'm seeing through a new pair of eyes now. Yeah, so amen. And I'm just looking. I'm thanking the Lord for what I've already had, and I'm thanking him also for what's to come because I'm not healed fully yet. So but pray, praise the Lord. Amen. And Jesus gets the credit. That's right. That's right. That's what it's about. Jesus. Amen. He's the one. He delivered us. You got you got a testimony? All right. Come on up, brother. A Massachusetts brother. Come on. Yeah, yeah Massachusetts brother. <laughs> At the podium, I've been told when I asked to do something, I should do it. Um, I'm here. It's interesting how God connects the dots. And uh, yeah, you're right. You know, we do get some new pair of glasses we see out of. Um, I started getting some... What I found were familiar spirits waking me up about three months ago late at night. And um, my wife's friend uh, was doing deliverance out back in Massachusetts. And she was like, boom, ha ha, boy, we got a guy. And uh, he put me in touch with uh, the brother Mike and started watching the videos. And I started learning out why these spirits are coming and getting me between 1 and 2 o'clock, one, 1, 1 and 3 o'clock in the morning. And here I am, 50, 53 years old, scared as crap at night to go to sleep. And uh, you know what? I've been in a program, you know, where the podium here, it's comfortable for me to have one of these phones, you know, microphones in my hand, so I'm comfortable up here. And you know what? God wasn't enough, you know, and when I was getting attacked by those spirits, you know, we're in a car accident. First thing we do is say, oh, God, you know, but no, this was directly to Jesus. So some people.
Amen. Yes. Thank God for uh, Brother Ron. He he manages the healing house next door. And we give honor where honor is due. Amen. We give a lot of credit for, for Brother Mike. He, he's the founder of this place. But Ron, he hired Ron. Oh, he, we're all volunteers here. But Brother Ron, he manages that place. And it it can be tough, you know. But he's he's in his element, man. He's in his element. He he um, welcomes people. He's hospitable and gives the word, shares the word. So praise God for that. Amen. Uh, Kelly, you want to share your testimony? Kelly's got a real good. Ooh, yes, Lord. I like this one. She had to share it. Come on and share it, girl. There, there's no animals in this one. No animals. There's no animals in this one. <laughs> but that's okay because any testimony is a good testimony when the Lord's at work. Um, I had to tell you, uh, before, well, when I got saved, when I got the born-again experience, five years, 10 months, 12 days, and five hours and 52 minutes ago, some days are really important to you, um, I, I've been going to this gym for 14 years and was working out with this particular person, and they have a lot of high-end athletes that come in, and they're young, and they have undisciplined minds and mouths, so I kept praying, you know, that the Lord would kind of come in and, and help these people, they're young, they're, they're, they're growing, they're in their element in athletics. And uh, so one day, this gentleman was talking about his foot. He had arthritis in his feet. And I didn't know if he was a Christian or not. And we just started talking. I said, I, I think I, I have some issues with, with, with what you're going through. I think I understand what's, what's going on with you. And so he said, would you pray for me? And, and so I, I'm like, well, of course I will. So I, I called him up. And after three hours later, we went through history. And he he. His feet by that month was all, the pain was all gone. On the top of his feet, he had neuropathy, neurology. He had all kinds of issues going on. But he went off of his meds, and he said, I had no idea that's what you do. That's how you pray. You know, so now he's, he's looking for anything that he can get prayer for. So this is kind of a lead into the next one. So I've been praying for five and a half years for people to be moved at this gym. It's in Ahwatukee. And so I, I met this little young Asian gal, and I was trying to grow my hair out six, seven months ago. And um, I, find, I got it cut off again because I just can't wear, I, I don't have a face for long hair. I'm sorry. But she came up to me. She says, oh, I'm so glad you cut hair. You, you look terrible in long hair. You awful in long hair. Don't ever, don't ever do that again. And, and, you know, when you, I've known her for 10 years, but I didn't know her. It's one of those things where you walk in because you're on a mission. And it was one of the, hi, hello, how you doing? You kind of do that kind of a thing. So I said, please don't hold back and let me know how you really feel about long hair on me. You know, so she... She started laughing. Well, we, I started talking. I met her in the women's bathroom. So we're right in the middle of the hall where everyone comes in. And we just started talking. I noticed she had a cross necklace on. And she had some issues with something. And um, it led to, I, she had issues with her arm, her shoulder, her wrist was all hurting for her. And um, somehow it led to a spiritual conversation. I said, can I pray for you? And she, she goes, yep. So just like that, she just holds, she just holds her arm out. But as we started to go through her, some of her history real quick, now this is 9.25 and I had a tax appointment to get to. So I'm in early to try and get done early. And so here we are praying and it, 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 it was fine. You know, I didn't care about the work. I didn't care about that. Day. It was about her being prayed for. So as she's standing out there, we started going through her, her issues with her neighbors. She had some issues. She had some ought. And I asked her, I said, do you have any unforgiveness or ought? No, no, I forgive him. I forgive him. And I said, are you sure? Because her voice was rising as she was talking about her neighbor. So I said, the Lord's going to reveal something to, to you uh, tonight about that neighbor, about your heart. And so as we prayed, she just, she had this tears coming through her eyes and she just felt this sense of peace come over her. And cause she's just this little fiery little thing. I think she's from Thailand or Malaysia. And, um, she went home. She was looking for me Wednesday. I didn't go on Wednesday. And I came back on Thursday. She's on the treadmill. And I walk in. And she comes running down. And she said, you're not going to believe this. She said, my shoulder's healed. My arm's healed. Everything's healed. I've got joy. I've got peace. So we're talking about the things of God. Now, this was the day I was at, at the, supposed to have the tax appointment. I'm sorry. It was Thursday. So it's now 925. And I'm thinking, oh, I, I gotta, I'm in a hurry. I'm not going to work out today. I just already knew it. She said, I need to show you something. So she takes me back into the bathroom in her locker. And she, we started talking about Oral Roberts, Benny Hinn. She said, you know, you, there's a gift of healing on you. You need to step out on your faith. You need, I'm healed. I'm healed. She was so excited. She's crying. So she gives me this book to read on Oral Roberts. She said, you know who Oral Roberts is? Oh, 17 years ago. She's, it's now 10 after 10. 
So I said, okay, great. Um, all right. So we're, we got done there. I go back in. I did one set of exercise. I came out to stall. I came out to get a drink of water. I see her. She's talking, and I'm, I'm walking away from her, but then I come back toward her, and she's, she's pointing. She's, she's having a conversation with this woman there. She set me up with three appointments by the time I got out <laughs> to pray for so this, this woman that was there, I mean, it was funny because I'm like, wow, Lord, I didn't, and she goes, I, she goes, I'm here. I'm not a preacher. I'm going to teach up. I'm going I'm to line up people for you. Oh, you need to step out on that faith. I'm like, good Lord. So my goal is to have that gym instead of Zumba there. We're going to get that class and have it as a healing and deliverance class and boot Zumba out because I got a Zumba woman that I'm praying for. She's coming on Thursday night with her mom. And so now it's, it's, all, it's all spreading around the thing. But by her excitement and her enthusiasm, because she is really a true woman of God, she's, she has that face. She said, I knew I was healed. But she goes, do you know what? And I said, what? She goes, I had ought. <laughs> I, said, I said, yes. She said, I went home. And she said, the Lord woke me up. And she said, I didn't forgive. And so she forgave this neighbor. And she said, that's when her healing took place. She knew that her shoulder was all good. And she goes, I had ought. Now I know what to look for. Now I know what to pray for. So now she's going along this gym. She's going along to everybody. She's finding people in wheelchairs. You know, so I didn't work out that day. So it's all good. <laughs> anyway, all God's glory. Lord works in mysterious ways. Testing, testing. Are we on? Oh, excellent. All right. That's a great testimony. You know, when you find people that are grateful, man, it is unbelievable. It's, it'll, it's infectious. That's how I get revivals going in the jail, somebody that's actually grateful, somebody that actually prayed for something and got an answer from God. God will send you answers if you're hungry, if you're desperate. But the problem is we're living in this time where everybody's just kind of casual with the way things are going. And since they don't know how to get their blessings from God, they get comfortable with their finances. They wrap themselves into business. and They wrap themselves up into relationships. And uh, that's not going to bear you any fruit. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the authority that you gave us over demons. And I use it right now to bind any devil that's hindering my friends that came tonight to get healed and delivered. Or anybody watching this online, I command you, devil, to loose them in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, Mike uh, said something last week and he gave, or no, two weeks ago, and he gave a little prerequisite saying, hey, uh, when we get saved, and it was the teaching on God's love, it's kind of like hitting the lotto. And he says, hey, I don't want to take any heat from that. You got to take this into context. Well, I preach a lot of what Mike's preaching. It just comes out of me. I listened to it on Friday. I'm in the jails going hardcore, and it comes out, and that came out. And I said, being saved is, is like hitting the lotto. Sure enough, I took some heat, heat come Thursday for my one-on-ones. Guy had to sit me down, this inmate, and warn me, hey, you can't be throwing out that out there. I said, these guys are going to take that and run with that. That's, this, this, there's no greasy grace here. This thing is a little tougher. And I'm thinking, okay, uh, I agree with that. And I started thinking about the lotto. Everybody's watched that E! Entertainment, The Curse of the Lotto. When I looked some statistics up on winning the lotto, half of the people go broke within four years. 70% of the people go broke in seven years. 40% of the people's family who, uh, someone in the family won the lotto, they say they're less happy now than when they were broke. Why? Because once you win this lotto, there's a new responsibility. You take some Walmart worker, I mean, if you look, people don't play lotto in North Scottsdale. That, that's a poverty game. Poor people play that game. I mean, not always. But somebody that's working at Walmart, just trying to struggle, just trying to make ends meet, trying to get by, and now you've got $50 million. Well, you don't know anything about diversified portfolio. You don't know anything about stocks and commodities. You don't know anything about real estate investment. And like Mike Tyson said, he said, as hard as I'm working in the gym and as much as I put out in that ring, someone's working just as hard to take my money. 
And so when you get saved, it's the same thing. That devil now wages a war against the saints of God. He's the accuser of the brethren. You enter the battlefield, whether you knew it or not, whether you went to, you got saved with Joel Osteen telling you how great and you'll get front row parking spots. He gets people saved without a doubt. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Those are Bible verses. Something's going to happen when the word is proclaimed. And then you're going to find out, uh oh, he didn't tell me there was a war. He didn't tell me I had to repent. He didn't tell me this devil was really coming and he was going to work with all the evil that I already had in me. Sin comes into the world through one man, Adam. Therefore, death reigned in all men. Oh, man, you get around someone long enough, you'll see some ugly come out of them. It's just a matter of time. It's already in you. You didn't have to pick it up. You didn't have to have someone teach you that. It was in your nature. And here's salvation comes through one man, Jesus Christ. And he's coming to destroy the works of the devil. He's coming to make all things new. He's coming to shape and mold you. But what do you got to do? You got to be pliable. You got to be in a position. The Bible's just a book of positioning to get what you want. And if you're doing something, if you're walking on a course that's contradictory to the word of God, you're not going to get delivered. You're not going to get healed. You're not going to live in prosperity. You're not going to have joy and peace. You're not going to have a sound mind. It won't work. It'll work for a while. When you first get saved, God just gives you incredible grace. Now I'm walking around Atlanta, Georgia, 1993, and I got to get paid. I found out I'm not making the NFL. I just blew my knee. My knee's just recovering and I got to get some money. Well, in order to get money, you got to tell people what they got to hear. They're not giving up Super Bowl tickets. Everybody knows Super Bowl tickets are valuable. You don't find one person like, are these worth anything? They know they're worth something. You got to get them at a price or you can make a profit. Then when you're selling them, you got to get the most you can possibly get. And I got saved the day before. And this little voice is telling me, God is very gentle. He's kind. He's, he's not even bringing himself in the mix, but he's bringing the word saying, did you treat that person like you'd want to be treated? I'm like, no, and I don't care. I make money. I care about myself. What's in me that I'm caring about somebody else now? This is not the place to be caring about people. If you're going to go weird, you go weird some other day, not during the Super Bowl. We got two days. And the voice keeps coming. But it's small. But I hear it. I got to even go to the mini bar. I'm not a big drinker, but man, I got to do something about this. I'm, I'm caring for people. I got a drink, a couple drinks, it's okay. A little music playing in the, in the sports bar. I'm like, yeah, all right, I feel my old self. Let's go out and do what we came here to do. And the same voice coming again and again. See, God's voice is small. The world's voice is loud. Your relative's voice is loud. The way you've been thinking can override God continually. But unless you're led by the small voice, you're not going to go anywhere. It's hard. Oh, it's hard. To deny yourself? The world already told you a vision. That's what TV is. It's a television. It told you of somebody you should be. That's why you got the same seven people, whether it, I watched Survivor the other day for about 10 minutes. And they have the seven lineup of the same people. Nerd, the player, the good looking guy, but he's not a player. He's an executive type, uh, or whatever. It's the same people. Why? Because they know you'll live vicariously through one of those people. It's telling you your vision. And the Bible's saying, you got to come out from among them for Christ to shine on you. How are you going to come out? Well, I go to church. I go to Bible study. You come out with your actions. You come out by listening to the small voice, not listening to your flesh, not listening to the world. Had an incredible testimony on Thursday. This guy comes in to my service and he stared, he's sitting here and he stares at the wall the whole time. But he looks completely normal. He's a 30 year old guy, he's a good looking guy, he's in shape. He's just looking at the wall. But then pretty soon, faith started rising up in him and he started glancing at me, but would look away when I'd look at him. And at the end, he says, Hey, can you spend some time with me? Can you come back to the bunkhouse? I need to talk to you. I said, I can't do it, but if you'll put in a tank order, I can see you Thursday. Normally, these things take two weeks. His is in there. And I come and see this guy, and he won't look at me. 
And so instantly I said, oh, he's got mental illness, these fear spirits controlling his mind. We start unwinding this devil. He didn't have mental illness. The devil gave him every symptom of mental illness. This voice in his head, he said, every time I look at someone in the eyes, I hear in Spanish the word faggot. And he goes, I don't want to look at anyone's eyes because I keep hearing this. Is this what they're saying to me? Is this how they perceive me? I said, no, that's a voice. That's a demon in your head. You gave place to the devil. And he got louder and louder, and he started giving him all the symptomology of mental illness. And we started unwinding it all, and he started repenting. He started forgiving. And then this guy went on deliverance on steroids. I mean, he's gasping for air. These things are coming out so hard. When he leaves, he's looking at me in the eye. When he's leaving, he's mad. He's at the service. He's mad what the devil did to him. you got to be able to unwind the devil's schemes. But in order to unwind the devil's schemes, you got to unwind the schemes that he's running on you. Jesus gives you power and authority. You got power the minute you were baptized in the Holy Ghost. You don't have authority until you face the devil and you say no. Otherwise, he won't listen to you. Why do you think your preacher can't get out demons? Oh, we don't do that here. Oh, once you're saved, you're always saved, and dark can't be in lightness. I've heard all that garbage. Don't talk about that lunacy to me. There's good men of God that's got years of fruit in those prison. People who ran ministries for years. Oh, if they were of us, they wouldn't have went out among us and done those things. You, you, can, you can sing yourself any tune. Those are all delusions to divert you from what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be casting out devils. You're supposed to be unwinding people from the schemes of the devil. And the devil knows that once you get free, you're going to help someone else get free. So he's fighting his hardest to keep you in bondage. Got one guy in there. And I couldn't get any demons out of him. And he wanted them out. He said, I was a child molester and I did 17 years. He said, I got saved and I was doing great for seven years. I read my Bible for hours. I had joy. I had peace. And I got out. Three years later, and I'm charged again for molesting another little boy. I want free from these demons. Look, you can pick up some powerful demons. You get now, can you get those demons out? I, I'm praying for them. I'm telling them, look, man, you gotta, you gotta make such a radical change. You gotta, some demons only come out by prayer and fasting. You need to get so close to God that God does another miracle for you. He knows he's not getting out of, out of prison. He's gonna die in prison. You, you, you don't play with demons. You don't play with demons. And it came out, what, what was the scenario? He got born again, he got saved, he got filled with the spirit. And then he gave a little place to the devil little bit of porn and the devil will put a hook in you that you never thought was possible you didn't think you were that type of person you thought you had more power you thought you had more character you never thought you would do that ultimately these sex offenders as you go down the line it, the demons make everybody gay now i understand there's a level of gay guys that come out and they're just really like a woman and they're low tech i mean there's one type of gay we had them everybody had them in their school where you just they came in the womb. They feminized you. They, they were already morphing you by the time you were in third grade. I'm talking about guys who had wives and only girlfriends. He'll drive you down to homosexuality. He'll put hooks in you like you can't believe. This devil, I know you look at that and you say, well, that's an extreme case. I just got a little bit of problem with porn. I just got a little bit of problem with backbiting. I just got a little problem with gossiping. I just got a little bit of problem with grumbling and complaining. I have just a little problem of not forgiving someone. That won't be me. Maybe not that. But he'll suck you dry of all that fruit you were supposed to be producing. People don't know how powerful the devil is. Now, put this into context. He deceives a third of God's angels. 
You think he can't deceive you? These are angels that were created by God. The minute they were created, they were in the presence of God. They worship God. They saw God create everything that he's created. They saw him create the heavens and the earth. They saw him create man out of dirt, breathe into his nostrils. He becomes a living soul. They saw all these things, and yet Satan was able to deceive them. He says, I'll give you more. That's got to be what I'll give you more. You were here. You'll go there. I'm going to be God. I'm going to sit on the throne. And they believed it. He's a masterful deceiver. You think he doesn't deceive you? Well, he's got the whole world deceived. He's got all these churches deceived. The first thing you should do, it's so easy to get kids delivered. They don't even have to repent. You take authority over them as their mother and father, and you cast those spirits out. And when the spirits aren't in there, you'll see someone grow in the word of God like you've never seen before. We should have went through deliverance in uh, six, seven years old. But now this thing spun out of control. Why? Because people are trying to manage demons. People are trying to get people uh, free from demons that have been serving them for years, decades. They don't know anything about serving God, serving God with a little freckle here and a little kind word here and a couple dollars for somebody in need here. The only way you can beat the devil is following the word of God. It's the only way. He's too smart for you. He'll deceive anybody. He was created perfect in wisdom. You weren't created perfect in wisdom. Not even close. You wouldn't be here. We'd be flying out to see you. You'd have sent our, your jet. We'd have picked us up. John 10, 27, he says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them. That small voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who is given to me is greater than all. No one able, is able to snatch them out of my hand, my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So I read that verse, and not knowing about deliverance, I said, oh, I'm in the Lord's hands. I know I'm saved. I know I'm filled with the Spirit. The devil can't snatch me out of God's hand. Well, that's true. You can't be snatched, but ah, you can be deceived, yes. Yes. and you can walk away. In Hebrews 12, 14 and 15, he says, pursue peace with all people. The world does not do that. What in the world does the world want to do with some psycho that lives next door? You want to get away from that person. Well, well pursue people, uh, peace with people who can't do anything for you. The world has no interest in doing this. Pursue peace with all people and pursue holiness. There's, a, there's power in pursuing holiness. It's hard. Oh, man, you find out how corruptible you are. Without which no one will see the Lord. If you're not pursuing peace with people and holiness, you're not going to see God's manifestation. If you love me, you will obey me. And if you obey me, me and my father will come and make a home with him and we will manifest ourselves to him. When a schizophrenic gets completely healed in one hour, I mean, is he completely healed? There's work to be done, but his mind is right. He smiled when he left. He, is, he looked me in the eye. He had passion. I'm going to fight this devil. The, the scheme was exposed. You can see the manifestations. Oh, you, that's why Mike's always talking about setting up the terror cell in your church because those are good people. They love God. That's why they're coming there. They're not coming there because they're a bunch of heathens and they just want to keep doing wrong. No, they're looking for hope. They're looking for direction. They're looking for freedom. And you'll be able to help these people out. The Lord will put them in your path, just like what Kelly was testifying to. She saw a need. She saw something. Hey, I, I, I got the answer for you. Now she's, she's lining them up. Hebrews chapter 12, oh, oh, I already read that. Looking carefully still in Hebrews chapter 12, least anyone what? Fall short of the grace of God. Least any what? Root of bitterness. Uh-oh, the person she unwound had what? A root of bitterness. And it caused trouble. What was the trouble? Her arms all jacked up. I didn't listen to it clearly. I was in the doorway talking to Robert, but I take it it was her shoulder, her arm. What? It caused trouble. What did? The root of bitterness. 
The devil deceived her. She was a lover of God. Deceived. And by this many become defiled. Luke chapter 8, 14. Now the ones that fell upon the thorns are those that when they have heard, they go out and are what? Choked. How are they choked? By the cares, by the riches, by the pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. That's the modern church. They don't bring any fruit to maturity. Telling somebody about Jesus is great, but when you get someone that accepts it, the work begins. Go into the world and make disciples of all nations. Teaching them to obey all that I have commanded. Oh, you got to teach them to obey? <laughs> hey, brother, uh, man, I think you uh, better not. I don't think you should be down at these clubs, dude. God's giving you a good wife. Uh, you shouldn't be down there, man. It's trouble down there. Oh, I messed up. I should have warned him. The devil's coming. He's going to catch you in one of his traps. He's going to set you up for a DUI. He's going to set you up for a sexually transmitted disease. He's going to set you up to go back to prison, brother. I should have told him. No, I didn't. I tried to be friendly. I tried to be a seeker friendly guy. I just was imitating what I heard my pastors and the way that they preached the word of God. And I was just trying to get, just get him in the love of God. Just get him hungry for the word of God. Just get him in a place where God can grow him up like what God had been doing for me. And I didn't warn him. Three weeks later, he got his third DUI and he went into prison for six years. The cares the riches, the pleasure, and they bring no fruit to maturity. You'll quit on people. You'll quit on people. We got this place over here. I'll say I. Better not bring everybody else into the mix. I got this little house over there. We got that house over there. That's going great. This one we don't ask any money for. We're in the trial and error stage. And... The only people that do good are the ones that go through deliverance. Had a guy, I think I told you about him the last time I was speaking, and he almost died. There was nothing wrong with him. They went to the hospital. They kicked him out. It was the second time over the last three months the same thing had happened, and he's, he's, he's dying, literally dying. It took him two days. We just set him in the church. He couldn't sleep in the little house. We had to sit him over there, and finally he comes out of it, and he calls me. His mind comes back, and he says, hey, Brother Rick, I think I was going to die. If I don't change, I think I'm going to die. I said, you're right. You've got to change. You've got to go through deliverance. You've got to be here at the house of healing. You've got to be here Thursday. You've got to be here Friday. You've got to be ready to fight for yourself. I go over there. He hasn't been showing up. I show up a couple weeks later. He's sitting there. I could tell he's high. I've been around the guy for a while. And he goes, yeah, I need a shower, man. I ain't showered in 10 days. Uh, I said, dude, there's a hose outside. There's soap right there. Take a shower in your boxers. Clean yourself. I said, man, now you got to clean yourself on the inside. You got to get rid of these demons. Brother Rick, I ain't got no demons. I wish it was that easy. I wish I could tell you that it wasn't true. Yes. Them demons come in. You're fighting. Yeah, you're wrestling. Satan is setting this whole thing into operation. These principality and powers are using these demons, and the demons play from within. They come inside the person. Wrestling. Oh, man, wrestling is a great sport. I can't believe they were going to get rid of it in the Olympics. I mean, you've seen some of these Olympic sports. These aren't sports. <laughs> Come on, man. You're wasting our time. Wrestling is a real sport. Come on, man. Men knew back then you can't be getting punched in your head. You're going to be, you're going to knock out 50 IQ points. You watch. It's already starting to happen to these UFC fighters. They become brain damaged. You can't take blunt force trauma to your brain again and again and again. All these boxers are messed up. Terrible Terry Norris. Was it worth you winning the championship? Uh, I think it was. My dad was happy. Oh, my goodness. Don't matter how many millions you got, your brain's gone. So they knew we're going to wrestle. We're going to try to put you on your back. Yeah, we all know that it's a rear naked choke. You just have to be on someone's back to kill them. But we're not going to try to kill them. We're just going to show you know, 
Who can man up? This is the rules. We're going to play by these rules. It's a great sport. My son wrestles, and what always amazes me is you'll see some guys come in. I mean, they look like Tarzan. I'm like, oh, this guy's going to tear this kid up. This is going to be fun to watch. I'll move down a couple rows. Then some skinny kid comes in all nonchalant. He's doing his little, I'm like, wait a minute. That looks like a little routine, like he's been here before. Whoa. And they just beat this guy up. That's way more stronger, way faster, way quicker. But what? This guy knows how to wrestle. He's putting in time in the gym. He's putting time in the mat. He's thinking about what he's doing. And Paul is using this analogy. You're wrestling somebody who knows how to wrestle. You're wrestling a masterful deceiver. You're wrestling someone that's led most of the world to the gates of hell where he was sentenced, where no man was ever to go. He's taking people there. And you're wrestling this interdimensional being that's not subjected to time and space. He's giving you a clear picture to somebody to say, this is no joke. When it says give no place to the devil, I can't allow someone to put me in some kind of hold because there's certain holds in wrestling that end up you pinned and beaten. Now the great thing is watching this wheel come out of people. So they get behind. I even watch it on YouTube. It's good entertainment. And this one kid for the state championship was down six points. And he was down and with one minute and like 20 seconds left in the third round. And he comes back and wins. The will of this guy, he rose to another level. The first two rounds, he got down six points. You think he wasn't trying? He was trying. But he went into something else. He went into this other level of determination that the other guy couldn't match. Well, the Bible says he gives us something. He gives us power and authority over the devil. That, yeah, it looks like you're whipped. It looks like two-thirds of your life have went down in the tank. You haven't done much for God. You haven't borne much fruit for the kingdom of God. You haven't experienced too much joy. Not a whole lot of prosperity there. But God is in this position to give you something that the enemy can't match. It's the Holy Ghost power. But the Holy Ghost power is not going to be manifested until just like your, your master, Jesus, was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. The spirit comes down in full measure like lightning and dove and remains on him. And then the spirit drives him into the wilderness to be tempted and tested by the devil. These tests weren't there to crush you. These neighbors, these relatives, these people in your life weren't there to crush you, but to refine you to give you authority over the devil, but you had to pass the test. That's why you're on your sixth or seventh boyfriend because you didn't pass the test the first time to listen to the small voice when he said, you better get out of here. You better get out of here. God is always speaking to you. He's been speaking to you before you killed your conscience. You had a conscience. I had a conscience. And I would smoke a little weed. I felt a little guilty, but I was confused. I didn't know the word of God. I didn't know God. And it grew up to a, a place where now I'm going and buying it. And I used to buy it from these guys. They were all high school dropouts. I didn't know it this time, but none of them had fathers. And I go up over there and I'm like, man, these dudes are losers. I said, I got to get in and I got to get out. I can't sit down and get high with these guys. I already, deep down, you kind of analyze it. Well, I already feel bad about myself. I can't be hanging with guys like this. I already in special ed. I already got problems here and there. My family is totally dysfunctional. I can't be hanging around these people. And so I would just get the weed and leave. And one time I decided to sit down. And the devil started having his way with me. Oh, you pick up spirits from people. Where'd you get your demons? You got them demons from somebody. You might have got them from your father. The sins of your fathers passed down to the children of the third and fourth generation. You might have got them through your own sin, opening those doors. And then other people they come right in victimization, sitting and fellowshipping with certain people. And I sit down and then I notice these guys don't just sell weed. They sell all this stuff they stole. So they had all these cassette tapes, these VHS tapes, you know, you can watch a movie, play a little cassette. And I, I, I saw some clothes. I said, oh, man, I'd like to have some of those. Started buying some clothes. They had a couple extra larges. Next thing you know, uh, I come back, and I'm getting high with them. Now I'm high, and I make a special order. Hey, could you go down and get me this brand? Uh, could you get me this size? I've actually tried these on. I didn't have the money, but hey, you get this size. They'll fit great. And 
Now I'm getting a little pat on the back. People coming out of the, oh, I didn't know you know me. Now you appreciating the clothes I got. This is great. Now I sit down. I don't know if it was the third or fourth or fifth time. I'm sitting there getting high and something comes in my mind. I, I think it's myself. It sounds just like me. Oh, the devil's a masterful deceiver. He don't sound like the devil. He sounds like you. And the voice says to me, hey, you know, telling someone to steal something is the same as stealing it yourself, right? I said, it is. Then he said, hey, uh, you're smarter than these guys, aren't you? Oh, I said, night and day smarter than these dudes. <laughs> he said, well, why don't you just go steal it yourself and pay nothing? I said, well, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that devil's been lying to you. Fellowshipping with people that don't love God and you're a Christian. You try to have a spouse that wasn't a born-again Christian. What were you thinking? You violated the word of God. The devil is the accuser of the brethren, accusing you night and day before the father. To what? To you violating his word. And God gives you grace, time to change. But when you won't change, when you won't do what the word says, the devil gets legal right to come into your life. What's he do? He steals, he kills, and he destroys. Oh, I had all kinds of nice things. It got up to the level where I had a BMW 320i on gold BBS rims in high school. It came up to the point where I had a rack of clothes, the best clothes you could buy, every name brand. I had gold chains and nice watches in high school. But what did it cost me? My high school diploma, a college scholarship. Then it systematically all got stolen from me. Ended up right there 30 years ago at Phoenix College because you got a GED. You can't go to a regular university with a GED. And someone said to me, hey, where'd all your stuff go? I could not pinpoint one event where any of that stuff went. It just all disappeared. Oh, an ill-gotten treasure has no value. You thought that person was a treasure. You thought your riches were a treasure. You thought you being something was a treasure. But at the end, it had no value. Oh, the deception of the devil is right there in your face. But you got to wake up and look at it and you got to face it and you got to repent and you got to forgive those people and you got to get up and know the test is coming again. Just because you go through deliverance doesn't mean you pass the test. That means now you're equipped and you got those demons out you picked up when you didn't pass the test. Now you get delivered and now you face that test. Right. Oh, it's coming and it's going to keep coming till the day you die until you face it. And you say no. Until you stand on the word of God, just as Jesus did. And when Jesus came out of the wilderness, he came out with all power and all authority and began to cast out devils. Yes, yes. The devil was tempting Jesus. He says to him, all authority I will give to you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me and I will give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you worship me, I will be yours. You think he's not going to tempt you in the same way? Well, you're not the son of God, so he doesn't have to offer you the whole shebang in one jump, one sitting. He's just going to offer you, you know, that chick you really longed for with a nice body and a cute face. He's going to offer you that guy that's really charismatic and a, a great Zumba dancer or whatever. <laughs> Zumba, whatever that other stuff is. I see him we're doing it at the gym and I just shake my head like, oh, my goodness. You should be over here in the weights. You'd be much better off than that. <laughs> He's going to offer you something. Why? He's a masterful deceiver. He's got things. He's got power. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you power over the devil's power. He has power, power to take human beings to hell, power to destroy Christians' lives, power to put sickness and disease upon a Christian. He's got power, but God gives you the power over his power when what? When you pass the test. It's hard to pass a test when you're loaded with demons. Your head doesn't even think clear. Your body isn't even working right like that lady and her shoulder. She's trying to work out and her shoulder, her arm was all jacked up. Get yourself delivered. Yes, yes. He says, he who has been born of God in John chapter 5, 18, he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. You can keep yourself. You can keep yourself. You can't have a ministry like this unless Mike has learned to keep himself. That devil's coming. People keep walking in my office. They say, hey, this is your office? 
And I know what they're thinking. This don't look like no office. You think in this war zone, I need to be putting pictures up in here? You think in this war zone, I need some flowers? In this war zone, you think I need something to make you feel comfortable? You better be focused on what we're sitting in there for, That's getting right. these demons out of your head. That's right. Yes. People come in here, my goodness, family members ship them over. I don't know why I'm here. Uh, uh, my wife thinks I need deliverance. Uh, yes, yeah, she's pretty observant. <laughs> Well, if you see anything in here, man of God, uh, cast it out. Uh, that's not quite how deliverance works. You gotta wanna be delivered. You gotta wanna repent and turn your life over to the Lord. You gotta wanna walk in a new path that you've never walked on. You gotta be able to walk by faith and trust God. Are you willing to do that? Oh, sometimes it takes us an hour before we can even get into deliverance. Because the devil puts what Paul called a fortress of lies in your mind. What's all this? You believed them. That's why they're there. If you didn't believe them, they wouldn't be in your mind. In Ephesians 2, 1 and 2, he says, And you he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sins. And once you once walked according to what? The course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. There's a course in this world. Why do you think most people get jacked up when they go to college? All these people lose their Christianity when they go to college. Uh, all these people lose their virginity when they go to college. All these people get these grandiose delusions about success in life when they go to college. Why? Because that's a course. It's a course on how this world operates. It's a course on how to have success in this world. It's a course on how to live the way you want to live and indulge yourself in the things that you feel like doing. Oh, man, these places are. And then people are amazed now that they're teaching socialism in there. Now you amaze that dudes want to be chicks and chicks want to be dudes. And it's not just a few. It's tons of them. And then you're wondering why people want communism and they can't read a book, yet they're in a learning institution and understand what communism is. Uh, it's incredible, the deception that goes on. And that's what everybody longs for, to go to these places. And even if you don't go there, you go down to your work and you start swinging a hammer, you go down to some place and you start uh, busting the table or washing some dishes. You learn real fast the course that the people of this world are on. And you know what? That course is easy. Scalping tickets was easy. I talked to someone that was scalping today and they said the Suns, which the Suns are a hair better than ASU and Grand Canyon this year, but everybody's in town for spring training and these $20 tickets were going for 150 bucks. These lower level seats were going for 300 to $400. Spring training tickets today at the Diamondbacks were going for $80 for $20 tickets. It seemed easy. I was like, oh man, you bought a hundred of those and you made 60 a ticket. Wow, that's $6,000 in two hours. Whoa, those were the days. The world is always trying to bring me back on the course of this world. Are you sure you want to sit in that office, Rick? You sure you want to come down here for six or seven hours and listen to people and help people? Are you sure you want to go to the jails and help these people? There's a lot of times there's not even any appreciation. I come into one sex offender unit and these people are like out of a movie and not a good movie, a scary movie. They put transgenders in there. Even though you got these put in you, you're not a woman, so they put you in with men. And, and they all look at me to see who's coming, and I call for church, and three people show up. Out of 200. You sure you want to go down there and do that, Rick? Ah, oh, but I've seen revivals in there. But I've seen disciples made out of the men that were incarcerated in that chapel. I've seen where people couldn't even come, only 30 can come to the chapel, and only 30 could come out of X amount that wanted to go. And so the people that were there had to go and break into small groups and teach the word, which they just heard and testify the miracles that God was doing amongst those people. Oh, I know how to get miracles moving. You gotta stir up faith. I got no miracle working power. He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. All someone has to do is be in the position of faith and want healed, want delivered, want God, and God will move and do that. Yes. I've seen it. So the devil's always saying, wow, wouldn't it be easier just to go back to that world? Oh, you know you got to keep trusting God. Oh, we got a little tight here a couple, about two weeks ago. I'm, I'm a little more used to it. My wife, she works hard. She's a first grade teacher. She's running around. I got two teenage, three teenage kids now. What are you going to do for this money? How, well, how's that going to happen? And this happened and this real estate deal got postponed five months. And all of a sudden, blessing. I said, oh, that's good. He just showed up. Then another blessing. Oh, now you got some abundance. 
by faith, not by sight. God's not going to line your life out so you can see clearly your ministry, your spouse, your family being healed, the reconciliation of your loved ones, your destiny. He's not going to show you all that stuff. In an instance, he said, my sheep know my voice. He's leading you down this narrow path, enter by the narrow gate. He said, why does the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many go in by it? But narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Difficult is the way. It ain't easy. Why? Well, look, the devil's working against my sin nature. I have a sin nature. And my sin nature is able to creep up at any time. And the devil knows when you step out on your flesh, you step out on your own. And he knows how to deceive that person that's walking according to his own understanding. He's walking according to his own human power, his own will. Oh, it's difficult to say no to yourself. Yeah, I know it's easier over there. But God's called me to this course. And every time I get a chance, this week was a great week. Seeing a couple good brothers. Brother Scott was in town. Saw another couple good brothers get a touch from God. Another brother who's been coming here for a while go to that next level. Well, I see those fruits. Those fruits don't mean anything to the world. They mean nothing. I tell people that aren't saved or just kind of casual with their Christianity. And they have no idea my motives, my intentions, my desires. And they have absolutely zero understanding of the fruits when someone gets healed and delivered and goes to that next level of God. So that's walking by faith. That's hard. The flesh doesn't want to walk by, fle- by faith. It wants to walk by sight. It wants to show you a course and say, jump on that course. It's easy. It is easy on that broad road. You get paid. You can get, it's easy to find women. It's easy to do all these things. The whole world is lost. tells you this in Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a cloud of great witnesses, what do you got to do? You got to lay aside every weight. There's stuff weighting you down. You better recognize what it is with that small voice, the Holy Ghost, and you better lay it aside or you can't run this race to win the prize because that sin which so easily ensnares us catches you up in the net. The prince of the power of the air that's working in the sons of disobedience on the course of this world, he will catch you in a snare. So he says, let us run the race with endurance that's set before you. God's got a race set before you and you got to run. People who are walking, they're on the broad road. It's easy. Now God's called us out of that and to run a race. Running's a lot harder than walking. I'm not in good shape, but I bet I could walk myself all the way back to Mesa. I'd be lucky to run to Thomas. So what do you got to do? It says you got to surround yourself with a cloud of great witnesses. Oh, that takes effort, man, to find somebody that cares about you, to find somebody that will pray for you. Do I like every Christian brother that's influential in my life? Is everything great about him? Man, they're human beings. They got flaws. Sometimes they're anointing. Sometimes they ask, uh, you know, stupid questions. Sometimes they don't have proper hygiene. They walk. Don't answer the door when you're in your underwear. Please, bro. Like, take time. Put your pants on. I can wait at the door. Look, if you're looking for some perfect friend, you fooled yourself because you ain't the perfect friend. And someone's got to find you. But see, there's something inside every believer that God has deposited in those people to edify you. It says the gifts are given for the edification of the church. Born again believers filled with the Holy Ghost, they have gifts. And those gifts are to edify you. Those gifts are there to, uh uh-oh, I see a red flag in you. You think I like someone telling me they see a red flag? Uh, Mike's got these weird pauses and these eyebrow things. He he speaks messages through them. (laughs) This, this one, oh, I'm, I'm way out of line. I better get back on that thin and narrow road and shelf that whole thing. I, I've, I've learned all the mannerisms down. People that are rookies come in here, it's like, well, Mike doesn't teach much. He doesn't disciple us. You haven't watched his face. <laughs> He'll warn you every time. He'll give you exactly the answer you're looking for. I don't know if you want to hear it, but it's the answer you need to find your freedom. So I was really seeking God, and I was in this tough position. 
tough. I mean, I had to trust God like you cannot believe. I was a hot dog vendor, and these spots were first come, first serve. And then somebody that never had any experience with the news started telling the news how much money they made. Well, you know when people start talking, they always exaggerate. So now they're exaggerating the money which they made on that street with a $50 license. And I knew from experience of scalping tickets that whenever they would do those and someone would tell how much money was out there with Charles Barkley in town and the sun's going well, that it brought more scalpers out. I said, ooh, it's going to take a month to get that license. It's a, it's a month background check. I said, people are going to come out. People came out like you couldn't believe. Police officers who used to direct traffic would get their license and take a day off to come work a game and take someone's corner. I learned how to pray. I had to pray. Now I had quit doing that business. I was no longer a ticket scalper. I got a wife. I got a kid. I got a mortgage. And God led me into this position to teach me humility, to give me a blessing. I didn't want to clock in and clock out. I'd never had those type of jobs in my whole life. And now he was going to allow me to have my own job. It was going to be a small job, just a hot dog cart, of five or six of those coolers from Costco. And I could sell water, peanuts, and seeds. And I had to trust God. And so I'm trusting God. And I, God keeps leading me to Ephesians chapter 5. And I used to read this multiple times a week. And God was speaking to me. In a powerful way, it says this in Ephesians 5, 1, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also loved us. And he gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God, a sweet smelling aroma. He says, but fornication and uncleanliness and covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for saints, neither fil filthiness nor foolish talk nor coarse gesturing, which are not fitting, but rather thanksgiving. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And let no one deceive you with empty words. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Jumping down to verse 14, he says, Awake, you who will sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So I start reading this over and over again. I got to change. I got to change. I had so many sinful mannerisms that I justified. Well, I'm not having sex with any women. But if you want to come out and you got a beautiful body and show that thing off, well, I'm going to drink it in. And if it's brass and it's booties, then that's your deal. Hey, you put it out there. I'm just a spectator of what you put in the world. I, I had all these, hey, if you want to disrespect me, well, you're going to get it back. And so people would say something, little smart aleck comments, and, and I had a little more ruthless tongue than they had. And I, I kept doing these just about 50 of these sins. That was what? It was giving place to the devil. And the devil was always looking for a place so that he could take more. And all of a sudden I'm comfortable here. I'm praying and God's giving me his word. See, when you get the word of God, oh, now you're accountable for more. Faith happened. You hear the word of God, faith happens. To walk according to what God called you to walk. When you give place to the devil, yeah, he was sinning. Oh, yeah, I'll take four of those waters. What? That wasn't, oh, no, he's not content with that. He wants more than my eyes. Two ex-girlfriends show up there. I hadn't seen them for years. One of them, I should have caught it right at the inset, uh, right when she said what she said. She says, I see you working here all the time, and I always think about you. I'm thinking, I'm a hot dog vendor. <laughs> I'm 28 years old. I think you probably made better choices than this. <laughs> Live in a three-bedroom house with a carport. <laughs> but what was he doing? He knew I gave him a place. He knew I like looking at those body parts. I've been looking at them all my life. But now I'm accountable for more. I'm leaving certain sins. I'm no longer a ticket scalper. I'm no longer a weed smoker. I'm no longer a liar. But this scene, oh, well, this isn't so bad to me. And he had his place. Now he sends one. Now he sends two. Then he sends three. Then he says, I can't, to what? He knew he was working with something. 
I wasn't sending that for no reason. He's not sending those people to you for no reason. He's got a place in you. You're a fault finder. You're a nitpicker. You're a gosper. You're a backbiter. You love money. You're on the course of this world. And he keeps running into you again and again and again. But now it's bad because what's in you is him. I had lost demons. I had picked them up. I lived according to the course of this world. And I had relations with people outside of wedlock. I indulged myself in strip clubs. I indulged myself in whatever I wanted to do when I was a sinner. That's what sinners do. By definition, they sin. And the demons came in through the sin. Now I'm trying to change. I'm hearing the word of God. But something keeps driving me. Something just keeps that little place for him. You're just a looker. Oh, you're not, you're just looking. You're not touching now. You're just looking. And then he keeps looking for more. Some of you now, you backslid so many times now and you can't figure it out. You've, you've relapsed so many times and you can't figure it out. The mental illness is getting worse. The voices are getting worse. The negativity and the thoughts are getting worse and worse and worse. Why? Because he's got layers in you of spirits. The only thing will work now is getting them out. You can't coach them. You can't coach them. I was, I was trying to coach them. I'd read this verse again. He'd lead it to me again. And I'd say, okay, I'm going to stop looking. I'm going to stop looking. And, and it was hard. I, that's when girls started. I mean, I was there in 1989 in college when girls would take guest jeans and cut them off right here. They used to go to the knees. When they went here, people would line up. This girl's got these cut shorts coming out of the geometry sec class. We Four or five of us line up to look. There were shorts to here. In 1989, they started cutting them off so their booty cheeks would hang out the back. And I'm trying my best. I'm coaching these demons. They're not coachable. And dude's like, dude, bro, you better check this out. To your right, to your right. Dude, you got to see. No, I can't do it. I got to look this way. God has given me all this stuff. i got to be faithful. God's not looking in for this robotic behavior like some uncontrollable person with lust urges that doesn't do those things. He's not finding glory in that. He came to set you free. He came to deliver you from that. So if you saw that, you would go, oh, no, please, Lord, bless those women. They're going to, some dudes get smart. They'll run game on women like you can't believe. They've been doing it for 20 years. They've been doing it since they were five. Dude, I knew womanizers that were good at it in the sixth grade. They'll, you're setting yourself up for victimization. I'll pray for those people. He's going to send them a plant. It's going to infect them with demons. He uses women like you can't believe. He loads them with demons. And then the men who have sex with them pick up these evil demons that aren't even manifesting in the women. The women were just the carriers of the demons. Oh, that's why the Bible warns you. He who sleeps with a harlot, don't you know, Paul said, that you're one in the spirit. Every demon picks, every girl that's a prostitute has loads of demons, legions by the time you get there. You don't just go from, uh, hey, I think I'd like to be a prostitute today. No, years of the devil beating you down, years of domination by evil people. Then you're out there as his vessel to infect people. God wants to set you free. This behavior modification, that's church stuff. And then you get this charismatic guy. I saw this guy, man, his name's Stephen Furtek. Man, this guy's a really polished preacher, man. This guy can, he can do it. He's got a quick wit and he can kind of rhyme and And then I'm waiting for the gusto. He's exposing the devil this week. You can buy the five CD set. And no one gets delivered from the demons. It's all this bits and pieces. Now I'll give... I'll be honest, I didn't watch the whole thing and I didn't pay the $29.99 to get the five CD set. I just assumed since you didn't give us a glimpse of deliverance, it wasn't on the tape. Because you'd be wanting to show the glory of God. Deliverance is miracles. Miracles of God. People deny miracles all the time. The divine healing of God by his stripes were healed. He would not have been whipped and bloodied and beaten if not according to the word, by my stripes you're healed. He would have just died on the cross and redeemed man. But he said, no, I endured this scourging so you could be healed. That's a miracle. 
The disciples said, hey, we saw someone casting out demons and we forbid him to do so because he doesn't follow us. He says, hey, he was not against you, it's for you. And he said, no one can soon perform a miracle and then soon say, Jesus is accursed. That's, right. That's a miracle. Deliverance is miracles. Christian behavior modification, it can get you going. You can get better at it. I got pretty good at it. I got to the point I passed some tests that I never would have even came close to as a sinner who wanted to do right. I, never, I had some grace. I had a level of, of power to say no, but the problem was it was just driving inside me so much to want to do this stuff. I hated to be disrespected. I mean, I'm willing to jeopardize my freedom. I want to pound someone's head in who disrespects me. And, and I'm a Christian. I don't, no one teaches me the root of it. The root of it is, hey, you never felt you were loved. You never felt you were appreciated. You never sensed you had value. And so the devil put that rage in you when you were a little kid, about the sixth grade. And now you're trying to live with what he put in you. You're supposed to be free from what the devil put in you. I came to destroy the works of the devil and to set the captives free. But no one was teaching me that in church. When you're saved, you no longer are rejected, but you are the beloved of God. God's not looking at you and all your imperfection. The minute you're saved, the righteousness of Christ is imputed upon you. So God is not seeing your sins, but when you're faithful and just to all right, when you repent of your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to throw them to the sea of forgetfulness, counting them against you no more. Amen. 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 Freeze, Brother Rick. So there's a, there's a freedom that's real. And then you get in these church services and God will really let it rip and it, it pumps you up. And you can, if you're a good Christian and a go-getter and a want, guy that wants it, you can make it a few months. The least amount of demons that you let in, the longer you can go. But ultimately, they're always there, driving you, driving you, giving you negative thoughts. No one likes to be disrespected. No one likes to be abused. No one likes to be belittled. No one likes to be looked down upon. No one likes to struggle to make the ends meet. No one likes to be depressed. No one likes to, to be in want and be hungry and not have enough. These are all real things. They're tangible. But look, there's a way out of all those things. But the demons that are working from within you and the course of this world, the prince of the power of the air that is now in operation is going to work in tandem against you, not getting those blessings and those promises. In Ephesians 5 and 8, it says, for you were once in darkness. Most people don't look when you get saved and you got a bum hip. The minute you get saved, you got a bum hip. Until what? Sometimes there are supernatural miracles and God can instantly deliver you. My father got instantly delivered of paranoid schizophrenia. No one cast it out. No one knew about no demons. We went to a Lutheran church. There wasn't one guy there that was going to know anything about deliverance. So God just in his mercy, says, devil, you're gone. Amen. Sometimes people get saved and they do get healed. But most of the time, you got to apply the broken body of Jesus, his blood, with your faith to get that body part healed you got to apply the power and the authority to bind and to loose and to cast out these spirits. You don't instantly get them just out of your life. That's behavior modification. And that's why Mike's always making that mimicking uh, little joke. He does, how you doing, brother? I love you, brother. Because he knows everybody comes to church and they put on your church face. You put on your church smile. You put on your church attitude because this is not the place for those attitudes. And so everyone's looking like everything's fine. But deep down, he's got a porn problem. She hates her father. He's rejected. He has poor self-worth, though he's a millionaire. This woman's loaded with lust demons and can't stop looking at everybody. Uh, you name it. It's going on right in the middle of the church. Why? Because the devil is the masterful deceiver. We can't be ignorant of his devices anymore. We got to get ourselves free so we can help somebody else. Once you were in darkness, but now you're called to be the light of the Lord. You're supposed to walk as children of the light and there's fruit in the spirit. It's in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And he says, find out what's acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But I had to stop watching uh, Survivor because they're all in their underwear, the females. And I'm dude, this isn't going to work, doing a, doing a little uh, looking for immunity challenge in your underwear. 
Well, I can't have fellowship with anything. I can't let those lust demons back in me. I can't be, there's, I can't do it. This is, takes, no, he takes too much. I got to expose them. I believe that is elementary porn and they know it is. And I guarantee you Google knows it is. Because after those shows, the rates of Google searches probably greatly increase. For it's shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things are exposed and made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light. Oh. Come on, that's what we got to do. That's why we're preaching the word in here. So some light would shine on your circumstances and your situation so that you could get hungry for your deliverance. A casual approach to deliverance is only going to take you so far. It's only going to take you so far. This devil, you got to learn deliverance. You got to be a practicer of self-deliverance. You're not supposed to. All, all those ministries that do this, I charge you, devil, in the name of Jesus, I bind. And somebody hisses. She's got, you know, cat demons. or something. What's your name? How'd you get in there? Well, everybody ain't getting freed from that methodology. That's just exposing. They either, you get something. Yeah, people get demons. And you think, well, man, I don't, you know, have witchcraft, so it's not me. Uh, you leave deceived. Look, everybody gets infected with spirits because you were born a sinner. You were born a slave to sin, and that's what you did. And maybe, let's just say hypothetically, the minute you got saved, you were free from every demon. Five minutes later, you open the door with your negative thoughts. Ten minutes later, with your negative speech, you open them and let them back in. Uh, two weeks later, with your evil behavior, let them all back in. So there's got to be complete freedom in your life. Yes. These devils are off in you of the world. There's some people you got corrupt jobs. You do things you know are contradictory to the word of God to get what you have. And you know in order to get free, you got to stop that flow of what's coming to you. Orgasms, money, pride, joy, whatever you think you're getting out of this sin, you're going to have to stop it. You're going to have to repent. Or you're not getting these devils out. You're going to stop hating yourself or you're going to be loaded with these devils. You're going to have to stop hating other people because pretty soon that, that leads to some sort of mental illness and voices. The guy that chewed me out for talking about winning the lottery. And I'm just sitting there. I'm real calm. I got to tap into the grace and power of God. You can't sit in this place for six hours on your own. I mean, I can't sit in these seats for two hours. I got to tap into something I don't got. It's just peace. Just sitting there. And I'm, and I'm listening and I'm asking these questions. And this, this guy's hammering me. And he knows kind of where I'm going. And... He's given all these answers. Oh, you don't know, I'm, I was discipled by prophet so-and-so. And this guy's pretty spot on. He goes, he had a word of knowledge. And I said, you have proven yourself to be a man of God. And I discipled him. As a matter of fact, I got my phone. I got his number in my phone. I'm thinking, dude, you ain't got no phone in here. You're in prison. <laughs> You're in jail. And he's trying to, and then at the end, I said, hey, I'm halfway through. I said, hey, have you ever been diagnosed with mental illness? <laughs> what? Well, you got to. Band-aid on your face, that means someone socked you in your eye for saying something you shouldn't have said. Uh, you are locked up. This is not the first time you've been locked up, but you're telling me it's the second time you've been locked up as a born-again Christian. And you're trying to tell me what to do, not asking me for help. You were inspired by something I was saying when I was preaching to have contact with me, but now he's just trying to fix me. He doesn't even know these are the beginning of mental illness spirits. He left, and I made this message of preaching to you now for him, and I showed up to preach it, and they said, oh, yeah, he's not here. They sent him to the hole. You got to really be messing up before they put you down there. Now he's sitting in complete silence, and the only thing they let you in there with is your Bible. You say, Why am I telling you this story? Because the devil probably has a much greater place in your heart, in your mind, in your life than you recognize. 
That's why God said to surround yourself with this cloud of great witnesses, these people that are fallible, but they love God and they have gifts from God. And you've seen those gifts of God and you've seen fruit produced through those gifts. And therefore, you have fellowship with these people. You love these people because it's God in them. These are the called out ones. These are the ones that are fighting the good fight of faith. These are people that you can trust to tell you things that you necessarily don't want to hear. See, a true friend will do that for you. Your buddies won't do that. That's right. Watch this. Here we are in Luke chapter 4, 32 and 30 through 37. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, be quiet. And come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst and came out of him, it did not hurt him. And they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What word is this? For with authority and power he commands unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him went out to every place in the surrounding region. So it starts with Jesus. And they're, they're confused. What is this? We're just into this teaching. Hey, we're going to stone you if you do this. Hey, you're going to be executed if you do this. Hey, here's the law. And they're, they're just trying their best just to obey this law. And there was not this grace. There was this judgment. And now Jesus comes along and he's given these people grace, an unclean demon, powerful demon is throwing the person down he's convulsing under the power of the spirit is taking control of him and when it comes out the guy has no harm to him they had rituals routine ceremony something to try to get the demons out the seven sons of Sceva had something but obviously uh, they had been beaten but naked by demons they probably had a little bit of bruising and abuse on the people's bodies that they tried to help in whatever manner or level they could do that and here this guy gets set free, this grace and this mercy comes along, and he's sitting there in his right mind and his body's working in good order. And they're amazed, this power and authority. Now watch, now he gets his 12 apostles in Matthew chapter 10, 1, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. That's what he gave to the 12. Now, if you think it's not coming down the line, here we go. Now the 70 got power and authority. Now he's sending out 70. And the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subjected to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you if you don't give him place. You don't give him place. There's a place he can hurt you. Right down the block. 35th Avenue and Indian School. We used to have a, our, our ministry was held there for a few weeks. You left there at midnight. There's all these hookers around there. You can head on down there. 35th Avenue and Indian School. You can pick up AIDS. You're born again Christian. You can get hepatitis. You can get whatever. You can't give him place. You don't have power and authority over the devil if you've given him place. Where's my joy, Lord? Where's my joy? Well, you gave peace to fear and anxiety. You gave fear to vengeance and wrath when God said, this is mine to repay. You bless and you forgive. And you're wondering where your peace is. You've truly been deceived. God is faithful to his word and to perform his word. The devil's faithful to accuse you when you're rebelling against God's word. Now he gives 70. Now watch Mark 16, 7, uh, 16, 15 through 18, the Great Commission. He says, and he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs follow them who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It came from Jesus. It went to the 12. It went to the 70. It goes to everybody. You can't choose not to be in a fight. 
You ever tried that? You get a swollen nose and a shut eye. <laughs> when you're in a fight, you got no other choice but to fight. Or you get the beat down. Unfortunately, there's many among us, and like me, trying to do the behavior modification was beat down upon beat down. And when the devil couldn't get me sinning sexually, he just moved over here. So why don't you get into this business? And I lost everything I was working for. Well, when you lose a lot when you're scalping tickets and money comes easy, well, easy come, easy go. But there's no easy money selling hot dogs. It's 105 degrees, 112 degrees out there, plus the, the, the buildings radiating the heat and the asphalt radiating the heat. It's hot out there, man. You're working hard. You're praying. You're thanking God for the provision and for the opportunity to be there. And now I lose 40000 That's a year's worth of work in a business deal. The devils will just move over. You know better than to do this? Well, they don't know better not to sin. That's what they do. And until they're cast out, they'll move over. And they'll come to do what they told you they were going to do, stealing, killing, and destroying. God says, hey, I'm here. I want to give you life. I want to give you life more abundantly. I want you to prosper even as your soul prospers. I got some plans for you. I know them. They're good plans yes. that you would prosper. This is, this is the will of God, not this torment, not this continual cycle of sin. No longer not having a ministry, beginning to start with someone who receives Jesus and only to see him putter out and to go back to the world and be disappointed and disheartened and to lose your faith for the next opportunity for the next person. You got to know how to help these people. To get them unwound from the schemes and the lies of the devil. John 1, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, you got to confess them. Not an intellectual decision, Lord. You know all things. I'm sorry I've been sinning. If you confess them. With the heart one believes and with the mouth one confesses. If you confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. 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 Hey, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody on the live stream, stay with us. We're going to go through some deliverance. We're going to help you out. We're going to get you going in the right direction. We're going to, we're going to walk you through this. For us that are here, that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do is be honest with yourself. Yes. Yes. It's embarrassing. Come on, man. I look at my life. I use that verse I quoted. It's shameful even to mention what, what they do in disobedience. I'm not even going to tell you about all the money I've lost, all the sleep I've lost, all the days I sat remorsing and playing over in my mind, my failures, my regrets, my disappointments. Over and over and over again, I had no idea I was just talking to the devil. I had no idea. I thought I'm just, you know, just a normal guy, just thinking about things. No, he was giving me things to think about. And that's all we got to do today is just repent. This guy, I led him in repentance, the guy with mental illness. And when he knew... What the devil had been doing and how the devil had drove him to these sins. He had no condemnation at all. He jumped right over. Now, do we play a role in sin? Yeah, hey, the born-again Christian had free will, 100%. And you chose to sin. You chose to do what you did. He gave you a lie. He gave you a hook. He gave you the bait. You took it. So, but this guy came to the realization how the devil had been setting up the whole world. And how he fell right into the trap of the enemy. And ultimately, that's how he got in. And how all those days he wanted to change, the devil, when he put in all those hooks, would not let him change. And when I told him, look, God will change you when you use this power and this authority that he gave you. This is how he got his miracles. This is how he cast out the devils. He gives it to you. These demons were coming out so hard that I didn't even get him the bucket. I just said, hey, it's a jail, you know, spitting on their carpet is probably not that big a deal. I don't know where, don't spit on the table. I mean, it is just coming out of them. He jumped, 
he, he jumped on an opportunity. There's an opportunity tonight with God. Amen. You got to take this authority and you got to walk in it from here on out. These spirits come in, unfortunately, they're smart. They come in like layers. It's like an analogy. If you're, When the U.S. was having the Cold War, we sent in not just one spy to infiltrate the Kremlin. We had a whole bunch of them in case you caught one of them. So the devil does come in in layers. But look, there's, God will get your mind right tonight. Yes, yes, God will get your spiritual eyes right tonight so that you can see what you're fighting against. When the devil's in your head and he's in your eyes, he blinds your mind and he deceives you. You're fighting other people. You're fighting yourself. You're listening to him. You're constantly giving him a place. We can stop all that tonight. Yes. And we can start fighting a battle from a position of authority. Now, we talked about wrestling, and I told you the amazing things that when a strong guy comes in, he can lose to a guy that's not near the strength. But when you're the strong guy and you know how to wrestle, oh, man. These guys are something to watch. I watched them. I saw them win the state championship. It was something to see. Combination, power, size, speed. They had it all. They were the best of the best. God's given us everything. He's given us everything. By faith, we tap into it. I came down here. There was no, how are you going to get the demons out, Rick? was no one thing. By faith and by God's word. It's as simple as that. The simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not rising up to my seat in heavenly realms and astral projecting up there and going to begin to send down fire and call down legions. And No, God just said, whatever you bind is bound. I'll go ahead and supernaturally do it according to your word. Whatever you loose... On this earth, I'll go ahead and loose it from the heavens. Now, however he does that, that's his business. He didn't tell me to get involved in that. He told me what to get involved into, binding and loosing these spirits. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do, everybody on the Internet. We're going to use that authority. But we can't have fear. We can't have fear. I don't care what you did. I saw a guy who did get delivered one time who was the, twice the, as bad as sinner is the one I told you. That was evil, what I told you. Everyone just went silent and stiff when I told that story. Nothing freaks people out more than messing with kids. Hey, it's same with God. You don't mess with kids. But I seen someone that was forgiven of doing worse than what I mentioned. I seen him get delivered. There's, there's, everybody is eligible by faith in Jesus Christ and the name that is above every name. It's above the name of any demon, any depression, any fear, any anxiety, any poverty, any poor self-worth, any mental illness. The name Jesus Christ is above all those names. And at the name of Jesus Christ, we can cast out devils. Hey, when I came down to deliverance, I wasn't too sure they weren't over here. You know, they're not in you. They're on you, brother. I didn't care if they're on me. Whatever, they got to go because they got manifestations from A to Z. It just so happened that they came out. They came out. So it doesn't matter of your clear understanding of how they come out. You just have to have the clear understanding that you want them out. You want the manifestations to stop and stop right now. We don't have to whittle this thing down. Uh, let's just think about the message tonight. Oh, that's what he's telling you right now. Uh, do we really got to go out that and really charge the devil? Uh, can't I just think in my mind? Well, the Lord told you the power of life and death are in your tongue. Yes. Well, I don't want people to think I'm weird and, you know, I've done all these things. You did them before heaven and heaven saw all those things. Don't you worry about anybody else. People that are in the trenches don't care about nothing. That's why they're saying, hey, we're about to let women in the military. I said, hey, if you're fighting a battle and someone's trying to kill you, I don't care who's next to me. As long as they're fighting the battle, I'm fighting. They're not worried about your problems. People are engaged in their warfare. And we'll do it right from here, right now. We'll do it right here, right now. Let's just apologize. That's how it starts. It seems too easy. I wish I could just apologize to my wife and everything would be over. No, I got to do dishes. I've I've had to sweep floors. 
I've had to buy flowers. I'm embarrassed buying flowers because I think they know that I was in trouble. Hey, this isn't, this isn't a holiday. God just tells us all we got to do is repent. That's all he's asking for. And the Holy Spirit will move. You just begin to operate in faith. This is my portion. This is my portion. I got way too many negative thoughts. I got way too much negative, wasted time. Everybody on the internet, hey, just be honest with yourself. I got an incredible touch off the internet many times. God's not subjected to time and space. It's your faith that connects you with the living God. Walk through this right now. Just pray with me, everyone. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just apologize. Lord, your ways are far above our ways, your thoughts far above our thoughts, Lord. And we have fallen short of your glory. We have like sheep, we've went astray and we followed our own heart's desire. The scripture is the truth, Lord, and I've been the liar. I've lied to myself, I've lied to you, I've justified what I do and it, it's sin and I'm sorry, Lord. Because I had not experienced it, I... Try to do it my own way. But Lord, I believe your word is the truth. And the deliverance is my bread. I can be delivered. I can be made new. I can have a sound mind and peace and love. And Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I repent and I ask you for this freedom, Lord. I've had self-disgust. I've had ought against my neighbor, my family members just disdain. I've acted out in violence and I've hurt people. I've taken things from people. I've manipulated people. I've done things with my body that I never should have done. And I want you, Lord, to have mercy on my soul. I want you to have mercy on my soul. Lord, there's something in me that's been telling me that I can't be what you call me to be. When I read the scripture, it talks back to me and says, not you. I want to be delivered from this evil. I hate that lying spirit. I turn around right now and I renounce you, devil. I renounce you. I'm sick and tired of giving you a place in my life. I renounce you in the name of Jesus. I, I'm, I renounce every prayer, every oath, everything I ever made with you. I renounce it right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of God. I'm sick and tired of you. I'm not going to dialogue with you anymore. I repent right now and I declare it done. The backbiting and the gossip, the hatred, the envy and the strife, the manipulation, the deceit. You stealing from me, I renounce it all right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And by the authority according to God's word, I bind your power. <coughs> I bind your sickness and disease, your back pain, your arthritis, that neck pain, chronic fatigue syndrome and headaches. I bind these sexually transmitted diseases and oppression. I bind this financial oppression in the mighty name of the Lord. And I loose you right now from my life and from my body. I loose you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command you now, let me go. I forgive every person that hurt me. I forgive myself. I forgive my neighbors. I forgive people who despitefully used me and mistreated me. I pray for those who violated my body in the name of Jesus Christ. By faith, I release them to heaven and I pray down blessings upon those people. I make peace with God by being faithful to his word, by being obedient to his word right now. And I take back that ground that I gave the devil by my obedience and by my faith. And I command you now to let me go in the mighty name of Jesus. Come out now. Mental illness, you come out now. Voices in the head, you come out right now. Lies in my mind, you come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there now. Guilt and shame from the abortion. I repent of the abortion and the murder in the name of Jesus. I repent of hurting my kids and abandoning my kids. I repent of it in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. You engage in this now. You're speaking to the devil. If you do nothing, you get nothing. Engage into it right now. You cannot sit there. You cannot act like he has not taken ground. You cannot act like he hasn't been running your life. He has not been manipulating you. Take back the legal ground right now. God gives you the authority to fight him. I command you, devil, come out now. Come out of me in the name of Jesus Christ. I command all this pain to go in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. 
people, don't stop those yawns. YouTubers, don't stop those yawns. Those are spirits coming out of your brain. Come out now. Come out right now. Put your hands on your belly. You foul devil. I loose you from my body in the name of Jesus Christ. I loose you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I command this pain in my soul to go from the loss and the sorrow, from the disappointment and the heart heartbreak. I command it to go now. I command it, go right now. Take a few big breaths. It'll come right out of you. Let's go, devil. Let's go, devil. Let's go, devil. Up and out in the name of Jesus. Up and out of there. I take authority over you and I bind your power. Come out right now. Come out right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out now. Fear of the devil. Fear of the devil. Come out now. Fear of the devil. Come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Fear of the devil. Come out right now. Come out now. Quitter spirits. I will not quit and I will not shrink back. I, I move on into the battle in the name of the Lord Jesus. I move forward and I advance the kingdom of God with the word of God. The promises of God are mine. They're yes and amen in him. And I will not take it anymore. Come out in the name of Jesus, the son of God. Come out. Fear. Come out now. Fear. Fear involves torment. But the perfect of love of God has manifested itself in my life and it cast out fear. For he who is in me is stronger than he who is in the world. Go, you lion devil. Come out now. Every lie that's been infiltrated into my mind, I want you out. Every lying spirit that's in my tongue that uses me for his advantage, I take back that ground and drive you out now. Come out, devil. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come on. All you got to do is fight. These spirits will come out. If you'll fight, they will come out of you. I promise. You foul devil of complacency. I'm sick and tired of complacency. Being complacent with the devil. Stealing and robbing and destroying my life. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bind the liar. I bind the thief. I bind the destroyer. And drive you out with the word of God. Go. Go you devil. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this couple go in the name of Jesus. I bind you now in the name of Jesus. I take back every bit of ground that you've stolen from them in the name of Jesus. And I drive you out now. Come out, devil. Take a big breath. Go. 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 Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, go in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Go in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Go out now. Go. 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 Violence, come out. Drugs, come out right now. Evil mindset, go right now. Go, 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 go right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Fight them now, sister. They're on the ropes. Drive them out. There he is. I forgive that person. God's healing your soul now. Forgive them. Go, devil. Devil, you're a liar. Anybody can step up to the altar. The ministry team's going to come forward. Just come on up to the front. We'll pray you through that breakthrough. Fight through now. This is using your faith. Go ahead, Steve, once we get to the front. Okay. Everybody come on up to the front. YouTubers, Steve's going to keep working with you. Keep engaging into the fight. Keep engaging into the fight. In Jesus' name, don't stop. We're going to pray you through this. Make sure you forgive yourselves. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, when you, stand, when you come stand praying before the Lord, make sure you forgive all. You can't have any unforgiveness towards yourself or anyone who's wronged you or hurt you. You must forgive. If you will not forgive, God will not forgive you. And those evil spirits will resist you and they will not come out. You must forgive from your heart. It's super important. All you have to say is pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. I forgive myself and I forgive all who's wronged me or hurt me, Lord. I release all unforgiveness to you right now in the name of Jesus. Please forgive me. Thank you, Lord. 
Now, if you said that prayer from your heart, the Lord heard it. And you are ready for spiritual warfare. You must speak to that spirit, whatever it is, whatever the stronghold is in your life. If it's anger, if it's bitterness, if it's frustration, if it's lust, if it's unforgiveness, whatever it is, you tell that devil, devil in the mighty name of Jesus, I have authority. I've been given authority in the name of Jesus. And you speak to that spirit. You tell that devil, I bind you. In the name of Jesus, I bind your power and I loose your holes from my life. And I command you in the name of Jesus, no more. You come out of me right now. Come out of me right now, whatever it is. If you have suffering with anger, you tell that anger spirit, I bind you, devil. If you have lust problem, you tell those spirits of lust, I bind you, spirits of lust. Whatever it may be, if it's masturbation, if it's sexual sin, if it's adultery, if it's fornication, if it's porn, you tell those spirits of you tell those spirits in the name of Jesus. I bind you, I loose your holes. You come out of me right now, devil. No more. I will not yield to you anymore. I will yield to the word of the living God. I will yield to Jesus and not you anymore. You command whatever it is to come out of you in the name of Jesus. You have authority. You've been given the Holy Spirit. You have the word of God. You have the authority. You tell that devil in the name of Jesus, I bind you and I loose your holes. Come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, whatever it is. If you've been involved in witchcraft, you tell those spirits of witchcraft, devil, in the mighty name of Jesus, no more. No more listeners. You hear me out there on YouTube. Just tell those spirits, I bind you. I bind your power in the name of Jesus. It is written, whatever I bind on this earth is bound in the heavens. Whatever I loose on this earth is loosed in the heavens. I bind your power. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I loose your hose. I loose your hose. Come out of me right now. Anger, come out of me right now. Lust, come out of me right now. Porn, come out of me right now. Adultery, come out of me right now. Witchcraft, curses, hexes and spells, come out of me right now. Every drug spirit, drug demon, meth, come out of me right now, devil. Cocaine, come out of me right now, devil. Heroin, come out of me right now, devil. Unforgiveness, come out of me right now, devil. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus. You tell those spirits to come out right now. You have authority. Luke 10, 19. Jesus says, behold, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He didn't say a few evil spirits. He didn't say most evil spirits. He said all the power of the enemy. You have authority. You've been given power and authority when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. When you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, your name got written in God's book of life. Your name is recorded in God's book of life. You have been given authority you are a blood-bought child of the living God. You must use that authority in the name of Jesus to be set free. You must use it. You must step out on faith. No fear. No doubt. If you have fear operating in your life, it's simple. You just say, Lord, I'm so sorry for fearing. Lord, I'm so sorry for fearing, Father. In the name of Jesus, I will not fear. 2 Timothy 1.7, God is not given a spirit of fear. But he's given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Take hold in the mighty name of Jesus, of this spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And you tell that devil in the mighty name of Jesus. Devil, I bind your power and I loose your hold in the name of Jesus. Now you got to fight. You have to fight. The Lord says war, good warfare, fight the good fight of faith. Whereunto you were called unto eternal life. Take hold of it in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When you prayed that prayer, God said yes. When you prayed that prayer, God heard you. He said yes. But now he's waiting for you to do something. So he can do something. As you do something, he'll do something. Remember, faith without works is dead. You have to do something. 
You are soldiers in the army of the living God. Soldiers in the army of the living God. You must fight. You must fight the good fight. You must war good warfare in God. We will be with you. He will show himself strong on your behalf. He will show himself strong on your behalf. You don't have to be a perfect person. You just have to have a perfect heart. And that just means you want to serve God. Lord, I'm so sorry. Lord, I'm so sorry. Lord, I'm so sorry. Whatever it takes, Lord, I'm going to serve you. Whatever it takes, Lord, I'm going to do it. Whatever it takes, Lord, I'm going to obey you. That's a perfect heart before God. And when you have that perfect heart, when you are humble before God, God will see you. He will see your heart. He will move on your behalf. Now, you got to fight, people. You got to fight. God will hear you. The warring angels are standing by, empowered by the Holy Spirit of the living God to help you. You must do something. You must fight. In the name of Jesus, devils, we bind you. Lying spirits, come out, devil. Deceiving spirits, come out, demon. Autoimmune disorder, we bind your power. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft, curse, hex and spell, we bind your power. Lust demons, we bind your power. Anger, we bind your power. Lying spirits, we bind your power. Deceiving spirit, we bind your power. Drug demons, we bind your power. In the name of Jesus, come out right now. Come out of them right now, devil. Come out right now. Schizophrenia, we curse you, devil. We bind your power. We bind your power, devil. Schizophrenia, we bind your power, devil. Shut your mouth in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. Come out right now, devil. Leviathan, we curse you, devil. We bind your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Leviathan, come out, demon. Leviathan, come out, devil. Always trying to control a situation. Always trying to con connive a situation. Come out, devil. Be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Leviathan, come out. Python demons, come out. Anger, come out. Know it all, spirits, come out. Pride, come out, devil. Pride, we bind you. Pride, we curse you. Demons hindering prosperity. We bind all you devils hindering prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. Demons hindering prosperity. We bind you. We loose your holes. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you've been given authority. You've been given authority. You've been given the Holy Spirit. You've been given the word of the living God. You have all the promises at your disposal. Take hold in the mighty name of Jesus. Fight the good fight. War the good warfare. And the Lord will show up on your behalf. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Move with awesome power and authority in the mighty name of Jesus. Be glorified. Be honored. Be lifted high. Oh, Lord God Almighty, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your kindness. Condemnation, we bind you, devil. You shut your mouth, devil. Condemnation, shut your mouth in the name of Jesus. If the Lord forgives and remembers no more, who are you? We bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus. Now come out. Anger, bitterness, frustration, self-hate, finger pointer, blame shifter, critical spirit, negative spirit, alcohol spirits, mind control, emotion control. We bind you, devil. We loose your hole in the name of Jesus. Now go. Nobody loves me. You filthy liar. Shut your mouth, devil. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Nobody loves me. Devil, you're a liar. 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 Emotion control, we bind you. Mental illness, we bind you. Schizophrenia, we bind you. Blindness spirits, we bind you. We loose your hold. Devil, be gone. Death spirits, we bind you. We command you to come out of those ears, devil, in the name of Jesus. Equilibrium problems, we bind you, devil. Come out of the inner ear in the name of Jesus. Hearing problems, be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Blindness spirits, we bind you. We loose your power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed and be made whole. Be healed and be made whole. In the mighty name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of your word and your Holy Spirit. Move with great and mighty power from... Upon the listener, Lord, upon the believer, Lord, 
in the name of Jesus, be healed and be made whole. Stomach problems, be healed. Autoimmunes, be healed. Pain, we bind you, devil. We loose your holes. Every spirit of pain, we command you be bound. We loose your holes in the name of Jesus. Condemnation, we bind you. We loose your holes. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Condemnation, we bind you. We loose your holes in the name of Jesus. Be gone. Unforgiveness, we bind you. We loose your holes. Be gone. Self-hate, we bind you. We loose your holes. Be gone. In the name of Jesus, adultery, we bind you, devil. Adultery, we bind you, demon. Adultery, we bind you, devil. We loose your hoes. Come out in the name of Jesus. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm so sorry. Lord, I repent. I'll never go back. I need you. I want you. This is a war. This is a fight for your soul. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, just tell the Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord. And thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, people out there on YouTube, you got to fight. Just continue to fight. The spirits will come out with yawning and coughing. If you're not able to, if you're not yawning or coughing, when you come in, just start coughing out. That's going to break the resistance of these evil spirits. Once you break their resistance, they're gonna, you're going to be yawning and coughing naturally. You got to fight. You got to fight. You got to fight. Every man, every woman is responsible for themselves. You got to fight. You got to obey the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you.